Shalom, Shalom. We go ahead and dive into it. No intent on making this long. Spirit jumped on me to do a video and talk about what's happening to, in the, from the big picture perspective. There's quite a bit going on, but I'm going to go into it, get through this dry voice. Got a dry voice and throat. So, Spirit of Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai, give me the strength to uh, put this message out. So if you're paying attention right now to what's happening, first of all, Barak Atah Yahweh, Barak Atah Yahweh Shai, Barak Atah Yahweh, Barak Atah Yahweh Shai, Kol Halayma Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rekach Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of his son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much love to the true men the true spiritual warriors of Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, mighty men. So I want to go, go into something, and this is going to become more and more crucial. Shalom, beloved king, Barakata. So from a big picture perspective, things are beginning to gel as far as this new world order is concerned. So we're seeing a lot of indicators that the global elites are moving forward with their plan and they're expediting things by collapsing the old monetary system under the U.S. petrodollar. So we're seeing the major movers and shakers, China, which is Moab, aligned with Gog and Magog, Russia and Iran. They're transitioning back over to the gold standard, <coughs> which is also going to incorporate other precious metals and silver. So they're purposely deflating and collapsing the United States or Babylon from the inside out. So I saw a video today of this Eve, and she was talking about being tempted by these reparations payments. And the original reparations bill that I saw that was being pushed was in California. And it had a an occult number 23 in it. 223,000 to all of the so-called descendants of slaves. And that number 23 represents domination, control, who wore that number? You got it, Michael Jordan, who was also in bed with the global elites. And it's been reported that he owns a prison system, a privatized prison. So they changed the number from 223 to about 300,000 in reparations. And that number three, we know represents wisdom. So this is a left-hand side enchantment agenda. One hand, they're telling Jake, we're going to repair your broken heart, your wounds, your suffering. But what they're not telling the Israelites, what they're not telling the public, is that this reward money, so to speak, comes with a digital tracking device to be tracked, monitored, to be under constant surveillance 24 hours a day seven days a week so all jake see <coughs> is this monetary reward they don't see the price tag behind this thing but in the video eve is aware of it so she was cognizant of this man's sinister plans so many israelites are waking up but we know 
that that is a set number of the elect, the remnant. But still the masses are walking around in gross darkness. But the elect are not ignorant to this man's devices. So we're beginning to see the U.S. petrodollar get phased out. Don't forget the December 13th date. That was a target date to begin to make a major shift or transition towards this new digital currency. Let's read this. Brother GMS Saints of the Most High. GMS Saints of the Most High. 2 Corinthians 2, verse 11. That Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. And when you go into that word devices, it goes back to the wiles or tricks. Let me go here to Job chapter 5. We're living in some very interesting times. When the wicked is being identified, he needs a fallback plan, an escape plan. Every criminal has an escape plan, a bug out plan, for lack of better words. So the bug out plan is the last ditch effort to put everybody under constant surveillance where they can literally hack the human body. Yuval Noah Harari talked about this, that we have reached heights that were never imagined or fathomed our ability to tap into and hack into the human body and mindset or mental uh, manipulation. Let's go to Job 5. The book of Job, chapter 5. <coughs> Let's go to verse... Nine, Job chapter five, verse nine. Let's go to eight. I would seek unto the Most High, and unto God would I commit my cause. I would seek unto the Most High, and unto God would I commit my cause. So we all have a lot to fulfill, a purpose. You got good versus evil. So the Edomites, primarily Amalek, that are at the top, they take the Israelite prophets seriously. Why you think they initiate, initiated Operation Warp Speed? Because they see that the, the judges are here. So the judges are on the scene of the crime. Investigators, inquisition is being made, uh, charging them or accusing them of their crimes. Job 5, verse 9, which doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things without number, who giveth rain upon the earth and sendeth waters upon the fields, to set up on high those that be low, that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. So we see a sanctuary being built, a tabernacle, a safe haven or safe place, the congregation of the believers, the believers which are the elect. So the elites recognize this. This is why they're beginning to come together as a United Nations. They had a World Economic Forum, a trilateral commission agenda to push forth this new world order. I know it sounds like something out of a Hollywood movie, but guess what? This is the most highs movie. All the ple all the pieces are in place. Let's go here. Drill 5, verse 11, to set up on high those that be low, that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. So we got stability through this wisdom. Verse 12, he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform 
their enterprise. So this enterprise is an international business network, the Dragon. But they need compliance. They need compliance. Brothers and sisters are having visions of aerial drones following us while being in the woods. One of the brother, Brother Gabar Dama, his wife had a vision of a tactus, what is that bird called? The flying bird from the uh, dinosaur age. I think it's called a, a tactosaurus. Anyway, that represents an aerial drone. Now, if you, you, if you remember, these, um, uh, the, the, the tactosaurus is a carnivore. So they devour flesh. So these aerial drones are birds. They're called birds to this day. And they devour flesh with these precision guided missiles and rockets. So Brother Gabar Dama's wife saw this, this flying threat following a large movement of Israelites trying to escape persecution in the wilderness. The Bible says be as pilgrims in those days. And if somebody can put up a little blurb, a little blurb on this carnivore, it's flesh eating. Thank you. Yep. The Ceredactyl bird, which is a flesh eating carnivore. That's very significant to know. So these drones devour much flesh through their precision guided munitions. So Apostle Gabar, not Apostle Gabar, Apostle Tahar was in the vision. Apostle Tahar. So when he looked up, he saw it and turned to Gabar Dama's wife and said, this cannot be good. So Apostle Tahar recognized the threat and looked over to Gabar Dama's wife and said, this is not good. Yep, the pterodactyl, that's how it's pronounced. It starts with a P, but it's pronounced pterodactyl. So the key thing to know is they devour flesh through their technology. So this, these visions come in similitudes. So this bird represents a flying aerial threat. So we know that Esau's blessing is the sword. So this man has taken things from the past and modernized it in modern weaponry. Even Moab, the so-called Chinese, have an aerial throne, uh, aerial drone, excuse me, an aerial drone called the, the pterodactyl when you translate it from Chinese. The pterodactyl. So this thing is going to get real. A lot of people playing games, they're going to learn that this is not a game. This is not a joke. So these drones were following the Israelites. And it was a mass, uh, a congregation of people. And they had traveled to a another man's land that was not theirs. Looking for a place to hide, a safe haven. But the Lord is going to be with his elect. The angels congregate around the Lord's elect. Let's go back to this. Job 5, verse 11. To set up on high those that be low, that those which mourn may be exalted to safety. See? So he's going to be a refuge unto the believers those that fear his name. So this man can just use all types of robotics, remote control weaponry that have no feelings, no emotions. This man is going to come in with great slaughter, not sparing the man of the gray hairs or the old men, not sparing the maids or the young children, the young boys or the women. So he is a left hand Sword of the Lord. He's got robots that can do a house raid, emit tear gas 
or emit a concussion grenade, explosive devices, automatic gunfire, and take out an entire household. So this thing is going to be ugly. Job 5 and 13. He taketh the wise in their own craftiness, and the counsel of the fraud is carried headlong. They meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in the noonday as in the night. So they're constantly planning how to take out the righteous, those that be of an upright conversation. And now he has taken that sword and made it a sword on steroids. You've got some fat kid or fat civilian wearing Coke bottle glasses drinking a Coca-Cola, a Coca-Cola, and eating Krispy Kreme donuts, using a remote control like an Xbox or PlayStation to kill an entire field of people by the press of a button. That is absolutely unbelievable. While drinking a coffee. I mean, this thing is, is going to get real. So this sword has reached heights never imagined. So the Lord is going to be a, a circle of refuge around those that fear his name, those that trust on him. See, they meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in the noonday as in the night. That's the elites. So they're coming up with a plan and so this is their secret chambers. So one of the plans that they have is to put the grid, take out the grid, to put the citizens in darkness and take away electrical power, heating and air, gas, water. That why? Then you're going to need to seek refuge, which is going to be already being set up at these FEMA locations these camps, but you got to be monitored, processed, registered, tagged, and tracked to be in process into these camps. A lot of women are going to look for that so they can get their comfort items, especially when they're going through that time of the month. What woman you know want to be in the wilderness, can't take a shower or a bath, can't eat. So they're going to try to cater to the women and children. Somebody post Jeremiah 4 and 30. Jeremiah 4 and 30, please. So it's, the Bible says, be as pilgrims in those days. See? Job 5, verse 15. The book of Job, chapter 5, verse 15. But he saveth the poor from the sword, from their mouth, and from the hand of the mighty. So that mighty hand is talking about the United Nations under the global elite, the 13 Illuminati families. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So the dragon is going to persecute the woman, the daughter of Zion, the Israelites, Shalom, beloved king, Zadok. Matthew 24, verse 24. For there shall arise false Hamashiachs and false prophets and shall show signs and wonders inasmuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. So a part of these signs is setting up these makeshift safe havens. Come on into this camp where you can get food running water, clothing, sanitary items, but you got to be processed through a chip, a stamp, a registry database. So those are part of these signs. Esau is a false prophet himself. He is an anti-Hamashiach or anti-Messiah. See? So they're going to try to cater to the woman to try to entice Eve to get the Adamites or the sons of Jacob to go off 
what has been will be again. There is no new thing under the sun. A beloved king, GMS saints of the most high, Jeremiah 4, verse 30. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Though thou clothest thyself with crimson, though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting makeup, in vain shall thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life. So Eve is beginning to see that this dragon, the proverbial snake in the grass, wants your blood. The Bible says he will not be satisfied with blood. So he is setting up a new grid system, the internet of things to be plugged into the beast. They literally have a computer called the beast. So what is that face painting? These are some of the teats, the vintage. When you look up the word metropolis, it goes back to mother city. So they're catering to the, the weaker vessel, the pleasures through the desire to remain feminine through the woman. The luxuries of life, the teats shall fail. Are you think the Bible says, tremble ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, for the vintage shall fail. What vintage? This luxurious lifestyle. So you're not gonna have your cosmetics, your manicures, your pedicures. These people out here are the devil. They're just blowing their horns. If the man got another vehicle in front of him, that means he can't go anywhere. Bunch of cave beasts and raggly orangutans running around here. Let's go back to that. Brother GMS Saints of the Most High. Jeremiah 4, verse 30. And when thou art spoiled, what wilt thou do? Though thou clothest thyself with crimson, though thou deckest thee with ornaments of gold, though thou rentest thy face with painting, in vain shall thou make thyself fair. Thy lovers will despise thee. They will seek thy life. We got a bro another brother had a vision of these United Nations under the BRICS nations invading the United States. China, Russia, Iran, North Korea. They were attacking the shores of America. That's why the Bible says that I will pour in, they will pour in like caterpillars unto thee. So these caterpillars are destroyers. Ask any farmer. They're destroyers of your crop. So this large bastion or this large city of commerce, this mother city, the daughter of Babylon, is going to be devoured by these invaders. That's what it's talking about. These caterpillars shall come upon thee and devour thee, invading forces. So everything is set in a balance, good against evil, light against dark, righteous against the wicked. Brother Zadok, I'm Ram, house of David, mighty man, Psalms 9 and 9. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed a refuge in times of trouble, and they that know thy name will thou put their trust in thee. For the Lord will not forsake them that seek thee. Let's read that again. Because these purple people eaters got blood on their hands. Yeah, just like the movie Red Dawn. So these left-hand high-level elite are sorcerers. They have left-hand side wisdom. So the Most High is a refuge unto those that have his name stamped on their foreheads. The Tawa, an exemption from judgment. The elect are sealed with protection. If you got an elect member around you in your congregation, that individual is the only one keeping you alive 
through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Because the Most High has radar. The Most High has tracking and monitoring of his elect. He knows the number of hairs on the head of his people. So he's going to protect and provide a sanctuary for his elect men, women, and children. Let's go back to that. Beautiful scripture, Brother Zadok, Psalms 9 and 9. The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in times of trouble. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Lord, has not forsaken them that seek thee. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So the elect loves the glorious shine of the countenance of the Lord's face, his wisdom. Brother Gabar Dama, Psalms 91 and 3. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. So a fowler is a hunter that hunts. To be more specific, a bird hunter. That's Esau, the cunning hunter, spoken of in the book of Genesis. So the Most High has a refuge, which is a spiritual hedge surrounding those that he loves. So we got to believe in him. We got to trust in his name. We got to trust in his word. A husband protects and provides. So the elect are going to eat. The elect are going to have heat. The elect are going to be protected in a safe place, which starts with this doctrine. The church is a spiritual building of those that are like-minded being joined together by this message that are being pied piped to this beautiful melody see let's go back to this let's go back to job book of job chapter 5 verse 15 but he saveth the poor from the sword from their mouth and from the hand of the mighty. So they're going to come in with their might, their military might, their air power, their drones, their surveillance. This is the hand of the wicked, pursuant to Psalms 17 and 13. Job 5, verse 18. For he maketh sore and bindeth up. He woundeth and his hands make whole. He's going to heal those that are brokenhearted. He's going to mend the broken hearts of the anointed ones. He heal. He binds. He wounds. He makes alive. He raises up from the dead. He restores our mind, our broken heart, and takes away our fear. Because through the spirit and power, of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. It's a spirit of stability, comfort, rest, peace of mind. The book of Job, chapter 5, verse 18. For he maketh sore and bindeth up, he wound, and his hands make whole. He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven there shall no evil touch thee. So what are we worried about? What is that seven? That's going to culminate in the last trump, the seventh peril, or the seventh vow being poured out, which are judgments. What are we worried about? The caveman cannot touch the elect. There's a hedge around the elect. There are angels around its anointed. And some of these people carrying dark spirits can see these angels on you. They fear and tremble at the power and presence of Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai. Can tell you some stories that will blow your mind. Running into witches, and they got scared out of their poop, and led. They left skid marks. Skid marks. They saw a light, a presence of protection 
They knew they couldn't cast enchantments, spells. They knew they couldn't entice, seduce, and they got terrified. Let's read this again. A book of Job, chapter 5, verse 19. He shall deliver thee in six troubles, yea, in seven, there shall no evil touch thee. So at the last trump, that's going to be the last major judgments on the earth. The seventh trump, the seventh angel, and the elect are going to be delivered at the end of the sixth trump, going into the seventh. And Esau turned around, you know, like, well, what is he doing? As soon as they hear a masculine voice, what the hell, you know, what do we do? Are we in trouble? These people are something else. They can't mind their business. Job 5 and 20. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. So that third world war is going to be set off by nuclear missiles. But the elect are already under the safe haven the safe house of the Lord's grace. The Bible says, My servants shall eat, but ye shall hunger. Job 5, verse 20. In famine, he shall redeem thee from death, and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. So they're going to say peace and safety, but then sudden destruction cometh. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. So this thing is going to be set off. Russia has already said publicly, if one missile cross the border into their sovereign territory, they're going to respond with a multiple barrage of missiles. So this thing is heating up. The new monetary system is being set in place. Many of us have been told we can't draw a certain amount of money out of our own savings account. There are already restrictions on how much money we can take out of the ATM. This has been a gradual squeeze by the serpent, a gradual slithering of this man putting this thing in place. An anaconda plan, look that up, that the North used against the South during the Civil War. So this serpent moves in silence and under the cover of darkness, slithering and in your sleep, begins to tighten up his squeeze around your jugular. So in your sleep, if you're not awakened to this truth, you're going to be taken by this devil. Yep, Brother GMS, Western North Carolina, Ezekiel 38, verse 3, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tobal. So these are people from the Khazarian Empire, the Tsars of Russia, Amalek, all right? They come from that area of the ancient Khazarian Empire. Caesars, Tsar, Kaiser. So these are the Amalekites. That's why the Bible says that the Lord will have war with Amalek forever. From generation to generation. So how can the Edomites be done away with? Vocat Malone, Ronald Dalton. Bugged out. Ezekiel 38, verse 4. And I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Iran, Libya, Ethiopia, Turkey, followed by a company or multitude of nations, China, North Korea, and the surrounding former Soviet Union bloc nations, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, 
Tajikistan, so forth and so on. Let's close out here. So this message is a soothing sound that drives the demons away. What did King David do when King Saul was, was vexed with demons? He sung or played the harp. Not sung, but played the harp. So this truth, it provides a, a sense of stability and peace. It's like a nice massage music that just puts us at rest, despite what's going on around us. See, let's go to Isaiah 61. The book of Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. So those that are in this truth and are anointed feel imprisoned, feel trapped like birds in a cage. Now they want to tighten up the squeeze or tighten the noose which is with this digital device. The C hit, the M to the O to the T to the B. Captain Tazariak, devil, all right? He's gonna try to tell the damn um, Hassan, I can't remember his whole name, that the trick is a spiritual mindset. No, it's not, it's a physical device but it has spiritual implications. It's an idol. So it connects your body and soul to the beast. So it's a physical device with spiritual implications, which means fornication, idolatry. These black devils are gonna get judged. And if you feel any sympathy for them, the spirit is not on you. Isaiah 61, verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord have anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He have sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Imprisonment starts in the mind. So we got to be mentally released first. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So freedom starts with an inward cleansing, renewing our mind, subduing our own thoughts, and being born again in the spirit. So a spirit cannot be contained in a prison, figuratively and literally. The most high spirit can't be contained. Why well, you think the apostles were set free out of the prison, released? The Most High Spirit is on his anointed, which cannot be bound eternally, but released, loose from the chains of the devil. Isaiah 61, verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn in Zion, the damsel in distress, the elect of the Lord of Zion, is being ravaged by a murderer, a rapist, a liar, a war warlock, a sorcerer. So the only damsel in distress are his elect. The two thirds are compliant, got their damn ankles on both sides by their ears. Uh, this man ravaged them. And they're happy with it. They're okay with opening up to this devil. So they are not a damsel in distress, crying out for a savior, a deliverer, to be delivered or released from the clutches of this devil. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our power, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy 
for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. So this is a stage that's been set. you got a villain, sleazy, evil E, the antagonist, and you have a protagonist, the righteous, the anointed ones, the, the sons and daughters of Jacob, elect, that are going to be delivered in time of trouble. So the Most High has set this stage so that he will get the glory. So the cave beasts were created to be used as a model of bad judgment a bad structure, a weak foundation, a weak system, their enterprise set up under witchcraft. So he's going to redeem his bride. Let's close out here. One moment. I want to get one more. Yep, Isaiah 54. A book of Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 3. For thou shalt for thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. So Zion, Jerusalem is being restored, rebuilt. These Gentiles are going to become a possession. They are a part of the inheritance promised to Israel. For well, thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Fear not, for thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood any more. He's going to take away the mourning in Zion, take away the reproach, the shame, and restore his ravaged bride, and have mercy on his anointed ones. For thy maker is thy husband, say what? Isaiah 54 verse 5. For thy maker is thy husband. The Lord of hosts is his name. And thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. Yahweh, Ahashem, Yahweh Shai. So he's going to exalt his name on high. By judging the caveman. And all his cohorts. His allies. Starting with the rebels. The two thirds that love this devil. That are willingly opening up to him and are going to be penetrated by this man's phallus symbol his little miniature d to the i to the c to the k which is a miniature washington monument an obelisk or obelisk it's an idol on steroids that emits signals that gives off a global positioning tracking location this is an idol on steroids so the Most High is going to preserve his bride that's crying out in vexation underneath this devil. A murderer, a mass murderer, a rapist, an idolater, a child molester. He is a freak and a creep. Straight savage. Isaiah 54, verse 5. For thy maker is thy husband. The Lord of hosts is his name and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth, shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth when thou was refused, saith thy power. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. Who was, going to, who was, who was scattered? The Israelites were scattered and went into slavery around the world. So he's going to gather 
what's been shattered or broken. So our mind and heart was broken. We are meek and humble of a lowly spirit, a broken heart, rich in faith, but poor in spirit of meekness. Isaiah 54 or seven, for a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath, I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on thee, saith the Lord, thy redeemer. So the Lord is gonna have mercy on his people. The Lord is a man that he should not lie. And he's merciful. He's the perfect judge, the perfect balance. So our heart, which is our mind, is comforted of this sweet melody. Sing unto the Lord a new song, a sweet love song. So we are rekindling the fire for our husband and slapping the hell out of this cave animal that's trying to ravage us with his damn little miniature idol, a miniaturized Washington monument or obelisk, telling this man to take that and shove it. Let's go here. Brother Azan Banyamyan, Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. So he's extending out his great and mighty arm through Yahweh Shai. That, that is who's occupying the right hand of the Most High. So that is the mercy seat, the throne of judgment. Psalms, let's go here, Brother GMS, Western North Carolina. Psalms 34 and 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. Woo! Let's read that again. See? GMS Western North Carolina, Psalms 34 and 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. So if you've ever felt a broken heart, I know I have. There's a feeling of emptiness a feeling of being destitute, feeling no like nothing. So we were forsaken or turned forsaken, castaways. We felt like nothing, beat down to our drawers and socks and kicked out of the damn house of the Lord. But now through his wrath, he's going to have mercy on those that he chastised. So he's near unto those that are grieving in spirit to be saved, released from this mental, spiritual, and physical bondage. Psalms 34 and 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Woo! So there's no cage that can contain the spirit of the Lord. There's no prison that can restrict the spirit of the Lord. There's no pit or no death that can contain the spirit of the Lord. He did not leave my soul in hell, the grave, the persecutions, the afflictions, being consumed by the fiery furnace that's going to judge this earth. So the spirit of the Lord is all power cannot be killed, cannot be burned away, cannot be restricted, cannot remain in bondage. So his spirit is on those that fear his name and that love him. Let's read this again. GMS Western North Carolina, Psalms 34 and 18. The Lord is nigh unto them. Damn devils. Let's close out here. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. 
Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Jacob's trouble. In seven troubles he shall deliver thee. Brother Azan, Banyamyan, Psalms 145 and 18. The Lord is nigh unto all of them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. So we have to be in this doctrine. We can't be a savage out here running numbers or selling coke or cocaine, meth and heroin. Talking about we love the Lord. Get the hell out of here. All right? Every time you see this devil, you got a circle of smoke around his head. Talking about he's in the truth. No, being in the truth is under the instruction of this doctrine. So this doctrine is a house of rest. It's a name we're in the truth and we don't know the name. Or we're still in the world. That's not in the truth. That's at a damn strip club, spiritually. Still committing all types of other things of the world. Lust. I gotta go to seagulls. I'm starting to. I got my sunroof open. I don't want to get splashed by a glob of. You know what? Let's get Proverbs four and thirteen, please, and we'll close out there. Are we still live? Yeah. Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs 4 and 13. Okay, we got to read this again because now the, the melody got thrown off. Brother Azan Banyamyan, Psalms 145 and 18. The Lord is nigh unto all of them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. So he is near to those that are under his instructions. See, that's this doctrine of Brother Isaiah Snow. Proverbs 4 and 13. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Woo! So seek the face of the Lord. It leads to life. Hopefully... Well, let's get that one. Proverbs 14. Let's go to 14. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Avoid all, all types of evil, or avoid all acts of evil. It includes his devices, his wicked devices which includes the sea hip. Let's end it there. Hopefully this has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh, Ahashem, Yahweh Shai, Ahashem, Akwak Kadash. Double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so. Pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. We got next, Lord willing. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Kwam Yasharala and Abad Babal. Bubba Kashat, Shalak William. Abad Babal. Shalom.